Well, my next guest is well described as a street smart entrepreneur, having bought his first business at the age of 17. Now, since then, and for the best part of 30 years, he's owned and operated a number of businesses. Here to discuss more about his passion to inspire and energise entrepreneurs, as well as his up and coming TEDx talk on how to be 33% less angry is Andrew Griffiths. Welcome to the program, Andrew. Hello, Heidi. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I have to say that I wrote down on my um, in my diary that my daughter saw that I've got Andy Griffiths coming on the program. And she was so excited that I was interviewing the child novelist, Andy Griffiths. Do you, do you get that confusion uh, much Can I all? tell you a story very briefly about that? Well, uh, for a number of you, when I started writing books and uh, I started speaking and I'd go to conferences and people would get me to sign the books and I started having these strange people bringing up books saying oh could you sign the day my butt went psycho and, and <laughs> my books, daughter's read that one I know <laughs> and uh, and I'd go well no that's not me and I would start getting these emails from children saying I love the day my butt went psycho and I didn't quite understand what was going on until I found out there's a Andy Griffiths who writes these wonderful kids books one day I was at a conference and this little girl came up to me with this book and I'd said no 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 I can't sign books she came up could you sign my book please Mr Griffiths and of course it was the day my butt went psycho and I started to say no and and of course her lips started to quiver and I just went, oh my God, I'd love to sign it, sweetheart. So I've signed this book for, then it opened the floodgates of, I'm signing his books <laughs> left, right and centre, feeling terribly guilty because I'm a fraud and all of this kind of stuff. And then finally I, I caved and I, and I sent him a letter, I couldn't get him on email saying, Andy, I, I'm Andrew Griffiths, I'm an author, I'm terribly sorry. I, this is what happened. I started to sign your books and every time a little kid comes up, I sign them now. I'm so sorry. And uh, anyway, a couple of days later, I got an email back from him and it opened up with, hi, Andrew, I've been signing your books for years. <laughs> this is the crazy business people sit next to me on an aeroplane with 101 ways to market your business and, and, and say, can I sign it? He said, I draw little pictures. I've got these whole series of little notes. Uh, and one day we're going to collaborate on a book called The Day My Business Went Psycho. Oh, that's good. Very good. Kaboom. Very good. Well, you, you've let the cat out of the bag. I know, I know. We can build the anticipation. No worries. Well, look, I do appreciate you coming on the program. Pleasure. And you've obviously had a lot of experience talking to people who are running family business. Mm. You've heard Steve Bowman's perspective on it. Very interesting. Do you agree with him? I thought what Steve said was fabulous. And, and, I, and I loved his, his points, and I think they're all very relevant. And interestingly enough, I think we're going to see a lot more people in small business uh, in the family side of things there. And a lot of people moving from corporate into the family side of business is very, very good. The only uh, other thing that I would add to it is what I say, in a family run business, you're working with your partner, whoever it might be, you need to have good bill pillow talk and bad pillow talk. And if you're having, your pillow talk revolves around things like, hey honey, did you ship that order? Hey honey, <laughs> have you had a look at the P&L? Hey honey, did you do the invoicing? That's bad pillow talk. So there's got to be little lines where we cross that line, we don't talk about the business. I know friends of mine that I've recommended in the car, you don't talk about business you know, on the way home when they work together. Um, it's hard to switch off, isn't it? It's impossible, but I, I work with uh, a wife uh, for about six or seven years. 24-7 we were together, it was tough, yeah. and we found out we were better at working together than being married. And, uh, and that was a tough realisation, so you do have to be really careful. I think that's really true. Absolutely. And I was saying to Steve that, you know, you, you become one and the same and your identity gets Absolutely. swept up in the business and you don't really have your own identity. But, but it is wonderful too. I don't think there's, I think it's a great sense of working with your partner. I would imagine working with your kids or having that great uh, sense of its family. People you can trust 100%. Well, you hope. And uh, there's that wonderful, wonderful sense of, hey, we've built this and we've achieved this. But there are pitfalls. And having a set of guidelines, as Steve suggested there, I think that's a really smart thing for the small business owners in the family scenario. Absolutely, you've got to have guidelines. And uh, I've seen some, some, some wonderful businesses in the family side of things. And, uh, and I've seen some disasters. And, and mainly because they, they missed the points that Steve brought up. They didn't kind of have those parameters, guidelines, and they didn't have a line. Across the and so ultimately, talk. when it all goes pear-shaped, they get angry. And, Very and this, angry. <laughs> and this brings me to your fabulous um, TEDx talk that's coming up called How to Become 33% Less Angry. You've got to be specific about these things. I don't want to be 32% angry, no, less angry, or 34%. How did so, that come about? I, I read an article a while back, and uh, and it was this article stated that in the last 10 years or so, Lego characters have become 
more angry, their facial expressions. And, uh, and I've done my... Lego movie uh, where they have... The, have well, they were the happy, Lego? happy, happy. But there were some sinister people there in the Lego some, movie. There were some unhappy faces. Very unhappy faces. And I did my own research and I, I look at it, it's about 33% more angry in the last 10 years, I figure. And I figure, well, if Lego characters are getting angrier, they're from Denmark, the happiest place in the world, we've got <laughs> issues. We've we got trouble. problems. We've got, we got things that we need to do. And, uh, and, and so, hence, that's, that's my reason for my talk is to that. And ironically, I'm the least angry person in the world. I used to be called Affable Andy. And it seems such an ironic thing to talk about. But I believe very strongly we are getting angrier. Do you think anger is a word that we use much? Because hmm, when, when I question. heard about your talk, how to be 33% less angry, I think it's really rare for people to stop and self critique and say, mm. you know, I feel really angry mm. because we tend to move into blame. Oh, absolutely. Would you agree? <laughs> yeah. Part of my research for this uh, for this talk was I started asking people, do you feel that you're more angry? And you're right, people go, oh, it's an unusual word, but I'm, I'm getting angrier more often is what people said. But the main response to that was, well, I'm actually not getting angry. Everyone else is getting stupider. Oh, that makes sense. So, they've, so we, we've outsourced anger. It's your fault. It's your yeah. fault. It's, your, it's everyone else's fault. And, uh, and of course, yeah, well, I, don't, I think we've got an idea what the problem might be actually here. And yeah. I think back to family businesses, mm. that's where moving into the blame and getting angry and all of that built up. You've got to, I'm sure you've got to have a pressure valve or a valve release you where do. you can actually, um, you know, let off steam and not put, put, put it all onto the other person. Well, and, and I think in any business you need to, if you find that you're getting angrier, if you find that uh, there are more uh, perhaps conflicts as well, I think, Heidi, that you start to find all of a sudden you're having more conflicts with staff or even more more angry customers and all that type of stuff, then then there's, there's a deeper issue, isn't there? There's something wrong. There's something that's not working right. Because it's not normal. There shouldn't be anger in a business. There shouldn't be a whole pile of, uh, of uh, people being upset. It's an indication of deeper-seated problems. Is that unrealistic though? I mean, is anger something that we need to accept in our lives and just try and keep it to a low threshold, under 33%, something like that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I would hope not. I, I mean, I, I would hope that it's, uh, we, we don't just accept it. I, I think that that's a passive approach, and I do think we can do something about it. I think a lot of the time we're just not conscious. Like, I've seen a lot of bosses in small business who have got major anger management issues, screaming at staff, yelling at staff, throwing things at staff, beating up staff. Oh, not so nice. much now, you know, but that's, there were some, some horror stories and, uh, that you would have. I mean, uh, hopefully we're a little bit smarter about it now, but I think that we, we don't we shouldn't just accept that it, look I'm angry and that's that makes everything okay and I think that's what a few bosses are like sometimes in business I'm angry because of what everyone else is doing it's not my fault everyone else is stupid do you think that's the point at which businesses can start to stagnate is when the values of the business leaders you know and um, their treatment of staff you know I guess when, if they're getting more and more angry is, is that something where the business stagnates or it's around the values? I, I think it's a few things, to be honest. It can be, uh, it can be a really great indicator that maybe the business owner just needs a break, needs a holiday. Maybe they're, they're just burnt out. Yeah. You know what it's like when you're burnt out. You, you have no, a short of fuse. That. Oh, that never happens to me. Sorry, <laughs> Andrew. Other people, when other people are like that, um, <laughs> that our, our fuse is shorter, we tend to be grumpy or all of those kind of things. And I find if you're burned out, then there's a whole pile of other issues as well. And it is, yes, around stagnation. Yes, it's you need to mix things up. You need to change things. You need, maybe you're bored. Often, you know, angry business owners are bored uh, business owners, or perhaps they feel f trapped. You know, I owe all this money. The business is there. I'm stagnating. I don't know what to do. So frustration. So it's frustration. Or fear is another one. Business is quiet. I, I'm fearful now. So they're all related. It's kind of like the evil triad of, of fear, fear, anger, and and uh, in some respects, even uh, hatred, I, I guess, kind of revolve in so, that. So, the biggest secret to cutting loose and breaking through and moving into a new paradigm. You, what's, it, what, what's the secret? Mix it up. You've got to change things around. You've got to move things around. You've got to get out of your comfort zone. You've got to shake things up. Even, you know what I say to people, sometimes we're in that space, I say just move your office around. Move everything around. Just change it around. Go for a holiday. Go to Bali. Lay on a deck chair for two weeks. You come up with your best ideas. And the longer the list of reasons why you can't take a break now, because you haven't got the money, you haven't got time, you haven't got the longer that list is, the more important it is that you have a break. That's 
that's that's my view. And we, we get caught up in in small business misery where sometimes we got to, you know, I, I'm working 90 hours a week. And it, uh, I remember when I bought my first business and I'd mix it with all these old kind of business guys. They'd look at you and go, so how long since you had a holiday? And I said, well, I've just bought the business. And they go, I haven't had a holiday for 25 I years. Say, yeah, so proud. And it's like, that, that's my 25 year without a holiday. And this guy, you call that commitment? I haven't had a holiday for 50 years. You know, I've had all my major organs removed, but I've run my business every day for 50 years. Thank goodness we are thinking differently Absolutely. now. But, but Definitely I think you've got to be challenged. You've got to have the passion. You've got to have the fire. A passion equals profit, in my view. A passionate business owner is one who cares, who, who pays attention. Well, you know? I definitely think passion equals profit, and we'll run with that. Done. Done. <laughs> Thanks so much for being on the program, Andrew. Pleasure. Always a pleasure Thank to catch you, up Heidi. with you. Thank you, Heidi. Great. Thanks very much.